<laughs> Praise the Lord. I uh, pushed in the bathtub just a few minutes ago, and the Lord spoke to me and was talking to me about starting a new series called Spiritual Hygiene. And so I got out of the bathtub, put a robe on, came out here, and recorded Spiritual Hygiene. And so the first one is off and running. But you know, I'm looking forward to this weekend because one of the things we're going to do in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 is practical, but it's also personal. So I wanted to share it with you and and relate, you know, maybe that you need to do the same thing sometimes, that if you find yourself whipped, <laughs> flat out exhausted, <laughs> worn out before the day has started, or if you're like me, doing a lot of things on the internet where it takes a lot of outgoing of the Holy Spirit and wisdom and knowledge that He does that, yes, He gives you at the moment that supernatural ability and you could just, you know, keep going for days, which I have at times, but when you stop, finally, you go, hmm, <laughs> and you're like a, a rag wrung out full of water and that, you know, at the moment that you don't need it, it's not there, so... You need to take care of yourself at times, you know, to, you know, not be a you know, health guru nitwit, you know, where you're running around selling to other Christians, you know, the latest health guru fitness kind of gimmick, you know. And God bless you if you're doing it for, you know, like some of them that do it for, you know, reasons of necessity, meaning they need to lose weight or they need to, you know, take care of their diabetes or something. But frankly, some of it, you know, and you know who you are, and you know when you are, and you know what you are, when you get overblown on it, and that's the total focus and attention that you have instead of it being just a small part of your life, not the most important part. I mean, for myself, you know, I kind of had to take stock this last winter and had to actually, you know, pray about and get this little tiny, you know, portable gym that... I could work out on because sitting on the internet for so long and being a network engineer and doing you know these things that are in ministry that's constant on the computer I got fat I gained weight I was out of shape so I needed to get away and begin to you know build up my stamina and develop my outer dead skin to be able to handle, you know, the spiritual truths and facts that didn't affect me spiritually, but when I got up from the computer and went outside, you know, when summer hit, it was like, oh my God, I'm dying. <laughs> and by the end of summer, I was back in shape. So, what we're doing now in Proverbs 3, 5, 6 this weekend is that we're going to begin to record one day in advance because I found that in my own life, as God gave me spiritual hygiene, that I needed my spiritual food too. You know, is that I need to begin to come to the place of being fed, you know, of my own studies that I, yeah, like you, I neglected. You know, I was too busy doing the thing, you know, that we do. We get do and make do do, you know, and do 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 do, you know, and wind up having to clean up the mess later. But sometimes when you're working so hard at doing that, you neglect yourself and you don't find it out until one day you just go, I don't know if I want to do this anymore. <laughs> then you go, but that's what I was created for. <laughs> oh, I need to straighten up, <laughs> fix it, deal with it. So I'm looking forward to getting back to the place where we I did once, you know, start to record them in advance, but then kind of fell away from that when they fell behind. And you know, you find yourselves that if you're in ministry for very long, there is, you know, and I don't like to mention it too often because people get carried away in the wrong direction about spiritual attacks, but there is a truth that the enemy of our soul, you know, and I don't mean Satan himself, because he's only one angel, and he can't be everywhere all the time, you know, attacking you. It could be a demon of some type or something else. But the point is, we do have principalities, power, spiritual wickedness, high places that works against us, and that 
the way to not just put on your armor and be ready for it, but the way to, in ministry, be aware of that and prepared is to develop your own personal study time, prayer time, you know, devotional and growth time, even if you are a minister of God and you are sharing devotion, that you're learning and then sharing it. That doesn't really cut it, you know. Even if you are being ministered to as you minister and that you look at your own video and you're being like talked to from God, you know, and you go, wow, the Lord's speaking, you know, and you're shocked as much as everybody else is. But all of us need to have that, that quiet time, you know, that alone time. And so I think the time that we're going to do is to take the, you know, more of the afternoon to record them ahead of time so that in the mornings I still have that time where I can, quite frankly, and quite bluntly, come out here where I'm sitting now, and it may be winter and it might be rain, but I can sit, be still, and say nothing, do nothing, and be nothing. But just a humble man of God that happens to know Jesus and loves to listen to what he has to say more than he loves to hear himself speak. And I know that shocks people because they go, well, he's awful mouthy. Don't you think that he likes his own voice? Nope. Well, he writes a lot. Don't you think he likes reading his own material? Nope. Well, what's he like to do? <sighs> Be still. That's what I like to do. So, in that, I look forward to having a refreshing time, a time of refreshment to approach each day in a better way than what I have done today or possibly in the past, and to really let Jesus have his way so that we all come together in the unity of the body of Christ and we would not be caught up by the frustrations or aggravations that the world, the internet, your cyber frustration, you know, will make you anxious about. But rather we will come to a peaceful place of growing step by step as the Lord leads us upward and outward away from this world and the things of the world. A tragedy. Believers arguing about Jesus' return. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God. 1 Thessalonians 4.16 The believing Christian should be living in joyful anticipation of the return of Jesus. And that is such an important segment of truth that the devil has always been geared up to fight it and to ridicule it. In fact, one of his biggest successes is being able to get people to argue and get mad over the details of his second coming, rather than looking and waiting for it. Suppose a man has been overseas two or three years away from his family. Suddenly a cable arrives for the family with the message, My work's completed here. I will be home today. After some hours, he arrives at the front door with his bags. But in the house, the family members are in turmoil. There's been a great argument as to whether he would arrive in the afternoon or in the evening, and what transportation he would be using. So no one is actually watching for his arrival. You may say this is only an illustration, but what is the situation in the various segments of the Christian community today? Even today, are they not arguing and debating as far as pre-trip, post-trip, mid-trip, mini-trip, kind of tripping over the trip? Don't you think that people are tripping up on what they're tripping about rather than looking for what Jesus said just to watch and be ready? They are fighting with one another and glaring at each other. They are debating whether he is coming and how he is coming. That is the work of the devil to make Christian people argue about the details of his coming so they forget the most important thing. And you know, the most important thing is to realize that the fact that you don't know when you will die is neither knowing the day or the hour of your death. So if that is true, and we could set aside for a moment looking for Jesus' return, then if you don't know what day you're going to die, then you might as well live like this is the last day of your life. So if you got to take it that way, then take it that way. But if you're making it into an issue where you have to decide and determine that it's Rosh Hashanah, it's Feast of Tabernacles, it's not this year, it's next year, it's soon, then recognize maybe you're getting carried away 
with what you tripped over yesterday and still tripping on today because we're looking for Jesus to return and he could come any day. He really can. He could still come in a day that you think you had perfectly down and missed the point of what his return is all about. Even as he rode into Jerusalem, not as the king of kings, but as the suffering servant on a donkey and not a white horse. So the reality is, don't be misled about what God is leading you in, but do what the Lord would teach you today to do, which is to trust Him with all your heart. Lean not in your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and let Him direct your path. Then you'll find that there is no division, because the person who is not prepared for what they are being taught to do is saying to themselves, I'm not listening to what God is speaking. But if God is teaching them and preparing them to do what he wants them to do, they will go through what it is he wants them to go through, irregardless of your theology and irregardless of what he may do with you. So if you are looking for the Lord's return, be blessed, rest, enjoy it. But don't worry about if someone else is doing something else, because they are the Lord's servants, doing as they are taught likewise to do, to follow him and to trust him and to be led by Him, as Jesus said we should do, as Jesus said we can do, and as we must do today, in this day of divisions and strife, when there should be nothing but eternal life being shared. Maybe that won't fit for you. Maybe that's not theologically, theoretically correct. But I think if you examine it point by point, you'll see it is precise because it is what the Lord would have for you.